Yo, what's up? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a custom skin entirely in Blender. So, let's get started. First, let's make a list of the things we need. Assets. Create a list of all the parts from each character you'd like to use. These assets will be picked apart and thrown together when we reach that step. Try to avoid characters with little substance or complex texturing, such as Mariana, uh, the anime Toon skins, and the superhero skins. Textures. Obviously, you're going to want to retexture all the models you're getting, otherwise it'd be a giant clash of colors, and I don't think anybody would want to see that. And time. Making custom characters takes me about an hour, excluding the pose and render, but for your first time, it'll be much longer if you care about the result. So make sure you've got quite a considerable quantity of that. And with that, let's get going. Alrighty, so I'm currently in Blender and I have my three skins ported in. Shiver, Danger Zone, and the Paradigm. So firstly, let's get rid of all the parts that we aren't going to use. I plan to, to use Carbet's little spikes here, the Paradigm's body, and Shiver's horns and hat, so let's get started. Firstly, I'm going to select Carbide's general body because like I said before, all I'm going to need are the spikes. So I'll hide everything else that I don't need right now and press tab to go into edit mode. Otherwise, you can just go to object, edit mode, then hover over the body with your cursor, press L, click delete vertices, and then boom. Now we get to delete everything else that's not related for the other person. But oh no, their arms don't match in the right place. Well, a good way you can fix that is by selecting, you know, the paradigm's shoulder bones, I guess they're called upper arm L and R, scale on the Y axis, but make sure your transform orientation is set to local, not global, and then put it in just the right spot. Make sure you press Alt G after this so it doesn't look too weird, and you can just keep adjusting it from there. Doesn't matter the perfection of it, although you do want to get it like pretty close, because what you're going to do is switch the and move these around in edit mode later. So it doesn't matter how perfect it is, just that it's somewhat close. Next, what you're going to want to do is select the mesh or your character's body, click on this arrow right here, click apply, then go back to your armature. Select all, go to pose, apply, and apply, apply pose as res pose. Don't forget to go back here to armature and modifiers, and then select the armature because it'll mess up and not move. Yeah, you're going to want to make sure that it moves around, and if it does, then good job, because now what happens is if you press Alt-R, it's going to go back to the pose that you set for it, not for the original pose, just what we want it to do. So, let's go. Let's get rid of those as well. This will take us going into flat mode, or I guess solid view if you prefer calling it that, and go in clicking on the color, and then random. So now there's like a, I guess, pinkish and then blue here so that I can differentiate, oh, this is carbide shoes and these are the shoes I'm selecting. Alright, so let's fix this. So I guess first what I would do is just go into edit mode and figure from the sides I can better see it. I'm gonna go into face select and just get, get rid of all these other triangles and polygons that we don't need as for right now. I'll do it on this side too so as well so it looks even. Hopefully that's about accurate besides these which we can just deselect. Alright, well yeah, just make sure it looks even. I want to delete the faces this time so that the other vertices that are connected to the other polygons would disappear like they did just barely almost a few seconds ago. Alright, now to fix these shoes, we're going to want to select all this little, like, round top that you're seeing right here. That's where the, you know, the shoe kind of sort of ends, we just want to extrude that with E. We're going to fix this up, make it look a little better later, but that is when we go on to the sculpting stage. Uh, I guess for now, just I'll just fix whatever needs fixing. Ready, good going. So the rest of this we're going to fix in sculpt mode, which is a later step that's very important to make your skin actually look cool. I'm not going to use this hair because I'm going to import something else from it, so I'll get rid of this and everything else. Alright, that looks good. I'm going to go into edit mode, select the hair with L like I showed you, and click delete vertices, and then boom. If you still have some leftover hairs, then yeah, you can just delete it. The hair bones and whatever else other bones have been deleted, you can check to make sure if, you're, if they're still being used by going into pose mode, you can control tab and moving them around with G, and if it doesn't like do anything to the mess, then you're okay to delete them. Alright, next you're going to want to find a head. I'm just going to use a default human head, but you can use whatever you'd like. The process is still the same. Alrighty, so I have my head. I'm going to want to import some kind of hairstyle, so I'll do that right now. Okay, so now that we have my hairstyle, let's start in the sculpting part. We don't need to see the armatures right now, we just need to see the meshes and how they interact with each other. So I'll hide all of those and get to work. So essentially what sculpting is, is just going to the sculpting tag, if you like, if that's your thing, or you can just go to layout. Select the mesh, click control tab, press 2, or just go down to sculpt mode and it'll take you to the sculpting area. Essentially what this is, is most of the time I just use the elastic deform brush because really the all you're doing when you're sculpting a custom character is just moving parts around to make them your own. However, if you're really committed to making entire parts from scratch for your character, then yeah, you're going to need to use some other brushes like the clay ones. 
So basically what we want to do is we want to take these so that it overlaps a little bit with the, the actual other danger zone part, feet, I guess, shoes if you will. There will be a stage where we're going to have to merge these together, but the stage is not quite yet. So we can fix, we can for now just fix this to the best of our ability and go from there. I think it's, it would be a good idea if I loot cut this area right here, look, because what it'll do is, whoa, it'll give us more polygons to work with and it's not going to mess with their UVs, which is great. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what's going on here, so let's figure it out. Hi, let's, I'm going to hide this mesh and see what the issue is. Okay, so it looks like this is supposed to be a part of something, but it just didn't work out. So what we're going to do here is just click delete and then click dissolve vertices if you have the same issue that I did. Alright, ah yes, loop cutting. Like I said, go to tab, click on the loop cut right here. Just add a loop. This is so that the vertices just look better when you render them and also their squares, which is like even better. Alright, so kneecaps. Again, scope mode, make sure your symmetry is turned on and, and we're just going to move these out. You want to make sure that clipping isn't happening too often, but you want it to happen just enough so that it's believable that these are part of the same character. Alright, that looks pretty much good. We can now move on to the other parts. Alright, so at least here, since we have multiple parts, we're going to want to select something else, like the, these compartments on top of our hand. Press P, then click Selection. This will separate them so we don't have to worry about accidentally sculpting these when we really mean to sculpt these parts. So... We're going to use edit mode for this. Edit mode will result in not symmetrical things happening. However, what you can do is get rid of the other side completely. Over here, yes, deleting it. Separate it, then go to where it says modifiers and click mirror, and that will mirror it on the other side of, as well. So whatever we do on edit mode to this side is going to happen on the other side too. If I wanted to, I could change the orientation of this. Instead of going straight up, I can make it go to the side by clicking this little button, making sure it's on the, I guess, smooth part, and clicking G to do something to it, and stringing the size of the area of effect. So what this will do is now I can rotate it if I want to, and then move it. So that changes the orientation. Very nice for the other side. We'll need to remember to turn proportional editing off. The shortcut is just O on your keyboard. I think that's about it for everything that we needed to do. So now we have our own little skin. Now we can start messing with the hair. And as you can see, it's going right through the top of your hat, so that needs fixing. I'll increase the area of effect of this so that it affects more, a lot more than what I'm directly looking at and start sculpting this in. When you have holes in hats like these and you just want to try your best to fill them so it doesn't look too awkward so you can't see any of the bald spots. What you may want to do is, since there doesn't seem to be an additional vertice like we need here, just add a loop cut here. There this hat so it's easy to see. I see. So I guess it's not letting me do the entire loop cut, so I'll just have to knife it. The shortcut for the knife tool is K on your keyboard. And just like this part. Yeah, I can. So I'll I'll separate that. So again, easier for me to work with. All that. And then yes, just knife it. Click enter to confirm this, and now we have a whole nother set of vertices to work with. Again, with this, I'll have to select it and press P to separate it, and then it's easier from there, so it doesn't affect anything else. Alright, let's see. That looks about good. Now we have our own custom skin model. Pretty much done. Okay, now we're on to texturing. So what you want to do first is just import all the, you know, regular textures first, and then we can get to customizing them. A few moments later. Okay, so now that I have everything textured, the next part comes, which is to completely retexture your character. Doesn't matter how you want it. I was going for a more of a red and black kind of skin, but you can do it however you want. That's part of the process of making up custom characters is you get to decide what they look like. I like to load up my textures in Photoshop. Whatever photo editing software you use will work perfectly because depending on the how you export your textures, they'll either have some artifacts or not at all. So I'll quickly edit them in Photoshop. See you in a second.
After applying all the textures that I have, we are almost done. This is how my character looks. All right, so the last and arguably the trickiest step is now to combine all of our armatures and meshes together, so it's one object. Firstly, it takes a lot of testing and wiggling around, but you've got to get right where these bones are going to, you know, edit each other, be affected by what. In this case, since I already have both neck bones and the head bones on the body, all I need to do for the head is just get rid of these three bones, in edit mode, of course. Control shift select the meteor woman armature, control J, and now they're connected together. So now all I have to do is just pair these up. So the face attach, I'm going to shift select the head bone, control P, keep offset, jaw, shift, select, control P, keep offset. Then lastly, oh, it's already parented, so I don't even need to do that. Let's go. So as you can see so far, it's not actually moving the face now, which is an issue. So one way you can fix that is, of course, by going down to the armature tab, selecting the armature they're going to combine into. Make sure you're hitting preserve volume and look, now it works. You have to do this for whatever else you separated. I separated the eyes so it would be easier to add the little eyes effect. Well, we don't just want the head to move, we want to parent everything, correct? So what you gotta do is pr repeat this step over and over again. Personally, what I would do is just combine all the meshes first so we have one thing that we can parent other things into as well. So you might be wondering, okay, well, this armature doesn't have any bones attached to it. Do I still have to parent it? And the answer is yes, you do. If you don't parent it, then it'll mess up a lot and that is not what we want, so do that. Make sure you're testing it along the way to see if it actually fits. There might be a moment when you've already parented something like the other body that used carbides like I did, and yet the objects will still not go with the rest of it. So what you're going to want to do is first you're going to want to parent it. You want to sl shift select the other mesh, you want to click control P, and then just click object and that'll parent it together so and then now you- and then you can control J and- And look at that! Now we have a fully posable custom skin that we created that you can now make renders of if you'd like and yeah, do whatever you want with it. Hope you enjoyed the video, I thought it was pretty fun to make considering that now I have a whole new character to add to my arsenal of OCs, so yeah, see you later.